you mentioned yeah. something about that age, um, the importance of of trust, of them really feeling like they can trust you. And I think that's a really good point. And I'm just wondering if just reflecting upon it, is there anything you could share about that? How how is it that you as a preschool teacher were able to sort of, yeah, win win their hearts or gain their trust or, or I realize I had to fall in love with each little kid. And I really did. I mean, maybe there was even the one, oh, I kind of like the naughty ones best, actually, because <laughs> I don't know what it was. They were creative about their naughtiness. But when I fell in love with them, then my heart was open. They knew it. They could feel it. There wasn't any, maybe there was one or two, which I can't really remember now, that I just could never warm up to. And they usually didn't stay long. They went somewhere else or something. But, but, but falling in love opened my heart. And then the connection, there was a flow between us. And that was so important because then they would, they would trust me, I would trust them, and we could, we could all relax. Oh, wait, there was one other thing about, um, um, oh, 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 I know, always, always, what I learned right away, always be fair, which then they would trust you, like, never to be very careful when there's a disagreement. Oh, he's got the blocks. And, you know, just say, well, now, what do you think? What words can you use when he's done? Can you get, you know, and I would just make sure that everybody was treated the same because even by accident, if I sort of thought, well, this kid really needs it, which I could manipulate and, and take care of that kid, but, but they could only trust me if I was always consistent and honest and, and trusting. That was so important. And okay, so here's my other legacy. <laughs> I've got, <laughs> yeah, uh, besides the play, the quiet body and the walk, the other legacy was okay, so I would make popsicles for the kids. Even in the cold weather, they wanted it, would be our treat at the end of before they went home after, after their lunch. And there'd be the different colors and you can you can imagine how this story goes oh i want the red one i want the blue one well then i guess it might have been even just right away i just said um you know you get what you get and then somebody said and you don't throw a fit and then somebody <laughs> else said and then a couple days a couple times later somebody else said and you're happy with it and that became the motto and it also, you can see how it establishes fairness and trust. Oh, okay, the world's going to give me what? Okay, the world gives me this. Okay, I, I'm not going to throw a fit, you know, kind of thing. So there, that's. Yeah, and rather than catering to them and saying, okay, you can have the blue one then, and you can have the red yeah. one. That's really great. And then before you know it, you would do, you would do the wrong thing. You would give the wrong person the wrong one, and it would not be fair. So I thought, okay, we, this has got, how, what can I do? Okay, you get what you get, you guys. And, and that sounds kind of like mean or not mean, but you know, like, ooh, you would say, but as soon as I said it, they all went, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, okay. <laughs> That's a great life lesson. I mean, yeah. subtle, but I'm sure it, it sort of imprints or ingrains something into them to understand that. Yeah. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I think you. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and causes, and also as a teacher, uh, for so you're tuning into. You got. We always had eight. Well, sometimes I had nine kids a day, and and there would be some of them because it was preschool would come Monday, Tuesday. Others would you know be all different days. So you had to take each individual where they were at in the, the long haul, where they were at that day. And then how the whole group fit together, I realized. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, could you explain a little bit more about that? Well, um, um, that would be where the fairness uh, part would come in, I think is where I was going with that. But it was like, okay, so each day a child comes in and you kind of know their disposition, their, their specific gravity, you call it, you know. Like, where do they usually level off at? Okay, you knew that. And you knew, you also worked in knowing that and knowing, oh, gosh, they just got over being sick. Or they ate candy last night. Or they had a hard time at home. 
so you take that into account and then you would take into account how it fit into the group but um um, oh, and oh, at the same time, what I'm trying to say is that each individual, you would be looking at what is their next step. And then as a group on that day, and sometimes my groups would be different every day, what was the group's next step? What, what did the whole group need that was going to help everybody? At the same time, you're kind of, you're going, you know, you're, it's like, you're, ju you're just, you learn how to just work with all those energies. But everybody gets what, what they need and get acknowledged. And what's the next? Because the idea behind the EFL is you're taking the bait. Oh, I read said, what is the basic premise? What do you think I said? It is just working with the kid where they are. That explains everything. Like this kid... He, I can't think of a good example right now. I will after we get off, but it's, it's like, okay, this guy needs challenge. This guy needs to be the one who's going to wait for the popsicle last or, you know, just whatever it was, um, you, you do the next, you do what you can see as their next step. And because that's what we ought to do every day on the spiritual path. Okay. What? Okay. I need a challenge. I need to, maintain my energy, keep my energy high. And some days you really couldn't do a thing with anybody or the group. But those days were the days when things were processing, I think. I, I don't know. I don't think there was, something was happening even when it felt like, oh, gee, I don't know that I gave anybody their next step today or, or saw anything that needed to happen. So you, anyway. you really need to wrap your energy around each child, but at the same time feeling the whole group and what was yeah. that are necessary for the whole group. So you're really having to tune into each child you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Each child as they come in every day. And, you know, then there's the crisis, like, oh, somebody gets hurt. Or somebody comes and it's just, you can just tell it's going to take for the whole day to get them in a good, an open, energetic space at all. And, but then it's all part of, it's all part of everyday life, huh? you know, brothers and sisters. So, yeah, you, that's how we sort of looked at it. How would you deal with those hard days, those days where, let's say the kids come in and they just don't seem to want to, you know, have any order or there's chaos or there's, you know, something happening where it seems like the group doesn't want to do what you're wanting them to do. How do you deal with those kind of days? Joy trained with me a long time. And I go, Joy, some days the only thing you can do is make sure that nobody gets hurt. There's nothing sharp anywhere <laughs> that everything's out of the way. There's nothing you can do, but maintain. Okay. So then the next day is always wonderful. Absolutely. It always, the next day we just, and because you're off, you can't be perfect all the time. So I would go, well, was it me? Was it just, what was it? It was a terrible day. But then the next day would be wonderful. But on the days that I could ch change the energy, refocus the energy, uh, one day I just took all the chairs from around the uh, table where we sat and I said, okay, we're going to, this is our airplane. Who's going to drive it first? Who's going to fly the airplane first? Oh, that was just like, that went on and on and on. And everybody, <laughs> oh, and look out the window. And then, and then, okay. And now today it's a train. When there was just nothing else you could do. But that was wonderful. A, a wonderful um, fun and, and, and focus. Everybody was on and excited. So, I would have things like that that I could pull up. I think it was part, I think it was part and parcel, you know? Don't you feel like that as a mom sometimes? Oh yeah, definitely. So far, like, wait, I haven't got anything. Look at the house, look at the baby, look at the, and so you just go, okay, well, well what, what do I need? What happens right now? Oh yeah, I had that exact kind of experience last night, basically trying to put a two-year-old to bed at a time that I want him to go to bed. And 
basically it was like an hour and a half of just like chasing him around the room. He wanted to play and he wanted to watch TV and he wanted to go outside and it was, you know, already eight o'clock at night. And, you know, it's like at some point I just had to surrender and I just lied down and I just tried to sleep and I let him tire himself out. And then he yeah. came to sleep. <laughs> oh, so. yeah. Something to Ronnie used to say, um, was uh, she always tried to uh, get her kids to learn how to make their own choices and learn what to do with their energy and you know like consequent whatever uh and i thought well for preschool maybe um maybe one of those days where I, i'm just looking at the kids doing whatever they want maybe that was a day where they were learning to regulate their energy like your kid your child is okay, I'm going to run up and down. I'm going to do that. It'd be, he's got to have that to know what the opposite feels like, maybe. 